And now, coming to you from the Pensado Media Center, powered by Westlake Pro. It's a NAM extravaganza. The flu bug is a beast. We've got T-Rex 5 winners. You're at the place. It's Pensado's place. <laughs> you hit me on air. I, did. I think there's new laws against that. I think so. Just got passed right before Christmas. Oh, hey guys, how you doing? Good to see you. That was a fake O if I've ever seen one. <laughs> Glad to have you. Uh, getting geared up for NAM. Uh, lots of good things coming up. Lots of stuff to talk about about NAM, shall it. we? Let's and, do it, yeah. and the flu, yeah. crazy enough. And we're hey. giving away some stuff. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Hey guys, hope you're well. Tip of the cap to the good folks and our partners. They are 1500 or nothing, the Blackbird Academy, Westlake Pro. Avid, Heaviosity Media, NAM, Groove 3, and Fab Factory. This flu bug literally is so lethal. It took out our guests this morning. So, Josh Goodwin, get better. You are absolutely on yeah, fire Josh. with Dua Lipa's new rules. We you got, got the uh, got the symbolic cup for missing Josh, like yeah. the like the Blue Angels fly without one person in the... Pouring one out for a homie. Uh, he's got Dua Lipa's new rules. He's got Despicable Me 3 soundtrack, Juan A's, the Despacito remix, and on and on and on. I think he's up for... I think he may have won a Latin Grammy. But anyways, get better, man. We'll have you back. Uh, we got another down soldier in Miami, Avid's Greg Strike Chin, oh, good Greg. buddy of ours. He's literally in the hospital with a breathing tube because of this flu. So the point is, everybody take care of yourself. Keep your hands clean, get a shot, hydrate, rest, do all the stuff that you need to do. It's pretty bad out there. I think we read, you and told me earlier. Wear surgical mask when you come to NAM if you're sick. I had a meeting the other day with James Fauntleroy who had a surgical mask on. That's how bad it is. I think you told me 13 people have died in LA. I think 20. In, who are young yeah. of flu. So it's serious stuff. Now, uh, better news, on to NAM. It's coming up in a couple of weeks. Be there if you can. You can join us every day for two separate events, please, please. all in the new Anaheim Convention Center North Building. That's adjacent to the hotel, to the Hilton Hotel, actually. Uh, NAM has expanded, so the new building is going to be a lot of stuff there. On the first floor is the Avid booth. On Thursday, the producers of Despacito, Mauricio Rengifo and Andreas Torres, plus a quick chat with the CEO of Avid, uh, who's Luis Hernandez Jr., Friday, Ariel Bernajal. Now, his work includes Kanye West, Mac Miller, even Andrea Bocelli, an amazing guy. And Saturday, a good friend of ours, the mix and film score wizard, Mr. Alan Meyerson. Oh, He'll be his own. So that's all midday at the Avid booth on the first floor from one to two. In the afternoon, when you're ready to close down your, your day, come to the Pensado Nam Jam in the live hub from four to six. You see it back there. We call it an audio carnival. Be live streamed all over the world. Grab a brew. Hang with a bunch of audio superstars. We're going to have some musical performances, giveaways of gear, software, musical instruments, education opportunities, and beer. That's important. <laughs> We're giving away beer. <laughs> beer. Uh, uh, it's an audio carnival and you're invited. So here's what we know is confirmed. Confirmations are coming in every day. Thursday. Uh, I know Odd Kid Out is going to perform. He does some really cool stuff Very on the machine. Cool stuff. On Friday, the incredible production team of 1500 Nothing will be there. They're rumored to be bringing a superstar guest or two. And, and, and for the first time, they'll be there legally. They will be there legally, which is, generally doesn't happen. Now, what they'll be doing may be illegal. but they'll, uh, More confirmations coming in every single day. A lot of giveaways. Companies like Native Instruments, Isotope, Tascam, Westlake Pro, Avid, IK Multimedia, Line 6, the Blackbird Academy, Heaviosity, McDSP, SSL, and more and more. They're signing up every day to make sure you get free gear, you get free prizes, and by the time it comes, it, we're going to load it up. Yeah. Here at Pensado's Place, we're also going to do something for you, which is get you free badges if you like. Yeah. So you can attend on us. How do you do it? Go to facebook.com forward slash Pensado's Place, enter for your chance to win a free badge, Courtesy of the place, that would be this place. Yeah. Um, so to recap really quickly, Thursday through Friday are the dates. 1 to 2 p.m. on the first floor at the Avid booth for interviews. First floor, Anaheim North Convention Center building. And then in the afternoon from 4 to 6, upstairs, in the same building at the live stream hub. End your day at the Pensado Nam Jam. 
Audio Guest Gears, Brew, Livestream, Hardware, Brew, and Brew. So you need to be there. Streamed all over the world. Enter now, and Dave and I will see you there. And giveaways. And giveaways. You know what, Herb? And Brew. I don't think some people understand. Our giveaways, you can win oh, yeah. because there's nothing to win. You just stand there and yell and scream, and we toss stuff out. Absolutely. So you've got a really good shot, more so than some of the online things yeah. or contests. And it's we not get a, a ton contest. Of, like, we give a ton away. A ton of stuff it's away. It's Oprah's greatest a thing. A ton of stuff. I've, it's so good. I've won stuff. I've I've thrown stuff to me. <laughs> oh, so, this time we'll throw stuff yeah, to you. Come back, come on, you might win some. The other thing we've been doing with IK Multimedia is the T Rex Five giveaway. So, Dave, um, line up. I think you've got a winner to announce. Oh. This week's winner is the incredible Jonathan Johnston. He's not just Jonathan Johnston. He's the incredible, the incredible Jonathan. Jonathan Johnston. Oh, good, good, good. I, I want good. that name. Um, so, congratulations to him, and yeah, congratulations Jonathan. for you guys entering. Good stuff there. You know, one of the things is when we were setting up this contest, mm -hmm. I think Chongor and one of your assistants went over T Rex 5 and what all it did mm -hmm. so you mm -hmm. could do presets mm -hmm. and all this stuff. Well, both my assistants did. Both yeah. the assistants, right. Yeah. And um, one of the things that we were talking about earlier is how good your assistants are, particularly mm -hmm. mixes. So, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes when we get requests for mixes, depending on the level and budget, like there's yeah. stuff for you and yeah. then there's stuff that can be for them. Yeah. You oversee their stuff too, don't you? Yeah, that might be a little strong, but uh, I, I have no self-control. They work in my room and they're both gifted mix engineers and uh, affordable, I might add. Uh, I'm always there, so I'll, I'll stick my head in. I'll, mm -hmm. I, um, you know, I'll, I'll toss some ideas and we'll, we'll yeah. I, I breathe on it, I guess is the way to do okay. it. All right. Now listen. They're good, but I'm better, so don't forget about me. <laughs> you know? But they, they, you're helping them out, and it's a good thing. They're, they're real good guys. So if you want to get touched up, you got the big guy who can do stuff. He's, he's got great guys who can do stuff. Just enter, go to the website, and get your stuff touched up well. Remember, Dave's a little more pricey, but he's Dave. Uh, money. All good stuff. So um, given that we have a NAM extravaganza mm -hmm. and given that the flu felled our guests, yeah. why don't we go to two of our favorite guests? This is actually, this is one of my favorite interviews ever. Uh, it, it was a ball. The wacky but super talented, incredible Mike Dean. The most talented Dean. guy on the planet. I mean, he's just so talented. Yeah. And one of the hottest guys ever, which is Mixed by Ali. Oh, we did this incredible. at NAM a while back. Enjoy this episode. Get yeah. better, Josh. See ya. You recently opened your own studio. Correct. What I was the California. incentive? What, what was it? You wanted your own house? Was it economic? Was it a business thing? Um, all three. Um, of course, economic, business. Um, but I wanted a place for, um, for my guys, the engineers that I'm teaching to come up and, you know, have a place they can call home and, you know, be hands-on with certain things that they possibly wouldn't have the, you know, the means or the outlets to touch, you know, certain plugins, certain gear. So I just wanted a place to call home and people can, you know, come up and, and learn how I did. You know, everybody didn't have the same opportunities I did, so I want to give the opportunity to the next guys. One, one of the things that, that Mike, when Mike was on the show, that you both share is that you, you guys aren't playing by rules. You record where it makes sense. Could be a hotel room, could be an airplane, could be whatever. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to have the latest gear. It's about getting the sound right and, and, and making sure the song is correct. Is that correct, Mike? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But exactly. In this day and age, it doesn't really matter where you're at. It's like, what gear you have and what knowledge you have and, right. you know, and right. know how to work a microphone and a preamp, you can record anywhere. The, that's the that's reason, all you need now. <laughs> the reason yeah. why we think that's important is you guys do not have to be held bound by what gear you don't have or what you can't afford all. and all that kind of stuff. You can break through that and make right. Look, if right they can do it and they're doing it, who the hell else can tell you what else to do? Uh, can you yeah. look at the level of heat here? <laughs> so you're really freed from technology and allow technology to be your assistant as opposed to be your, your master. Exactly. It, it, it's a tool to help you. Would you agree with that? 100%. Yeah? Exactly. 100%. Let me tell you, this is before we go on, this is one thing I have to share with you guys that Dre always shared with me. He said, it's not what you're working on, it's who's pressing the buttons. And at that time, I was just in an inbox in a... Uh, I said just the inbox, and you know, I was kind of discouraged on moving forward because I didn't think I had what I needed to make these hit records. But after he told me that, you know, I went back in with me and my inbox, and we made it work. So never feel like you need the top of the top of the line, everything to get your stuff going. Just practice and work with what you have, and perfect what you have, and you will not lose. And, and this dude, um, who I who I consider my little brother, um, at 16 just decided he had a dream. 
Yeah. Wasn't about school, wasn't about formality, wasn't about a certificate, wasn't about gear, wasn't about all that kind of stuff. And I will tell you that Chongo and I recently went in the studio and he was mixing, well, who's, what was it, School uh, Yeah, I'm wrapping up Schoolboy Q's album. Yeah. It was like watching, if you like basketball and watch Steph Curry shoot, or if you watch a great <laughs> soccer player, great. I was in awe. I just sat back because the speed in which he was utilizing the board and Pro Tools and everything else, and it was just the chairs don't slide. I would actually emulate it, so it was just like <laughs> boom, 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 sit back. <laughs> boom, 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 make a move. And, I, 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 <laughs> and, then, and then it moved. But I watched the right. song yeah. shape at a level of speed that was fascinating. Like, it made my next appointment late. Chongor kept going, Herb, we gotta go. I was like, I'm not going anyplace. I was just, <laughs> so, so the artfulness and craftsmanship that they both exhibit has not been from how formalized they have or racks of gear and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's fascinating to watch. Yeah. Exactly. Mike, uh, we've, been, we've been friends for 20 years. I've, I've stepped over you before when you were fighting with an intern <laughs> in the hallway to get to my studio. Yeah. Uh, we got a long, big history. It's old um, story. How important was your classical background? I want to talk to um, Derek about his use of live instruments on, on, on Butterfly and, and, and your experiences with that. You're a walking live instrument. When you play, you and Kanye do shows just you and Kanye. And, yeah, yeah. And, and you're, you're, is that a function of your, your classical training and your experiences growing up? Yeah, I mean, I translate, like, music theory to frequencies basically in my head, you know, like if a song's in a certain key, I know what frequencies to turn on an EQ to make certain notes come out or whatever without using a calculator or whatever. It's just mm. kind of... How, how do you master, you ma like you guys, I don't know if you know his credits, but he, he, he records, tracks, writes, composes, mixes, masters. And, 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 and by the way, on, on a Travis Scott record, you've got an assistant credit. No. All music. Yeah, I swear. Go no. look up Travis Scott. It says assistant. They and got, it's got commas. Away. So, yeah. so th that's just horrible. I think it was that's just horrible. <laughs> You're taking work away from <laughs> some of these <laughs> people. Yeah. What do you not do? And 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 I can't master my own I stuff. Can't sing. I, I need that. Yeah. If I could sing, I'd be like the White Prince. Oh yeah, you'd be. Well, sure. Derek, Derek, Derek sings. So that that we got that covered. On. Well, Herb's a great singer. Oh well, shit. Um, but how? Um, how do you how do you master your own stuff? I need that safety net. I need somebody to correct my mistakes, which I do make. He doesn't. No, yeah, sometimes I do. You know, <laughs> um, like Kanye's stuff. I usually usually get someone else to master it because oh. I like a safety net on that. Yeah. But like other stuff, I just I don't know. I just like to. I already get it sound the way I want it to sound while I'm mixing. So it's kind of just got to hit the level and get them all leveled out. Both of you guys, are, are you concerned with how loud your mixes are? Nah, not really. Um, <laughs> I love that. Not, not really, honestly. My whole thing, I'm a fan of people using the volume knob. I think Guru said that one time. So, yeah, I don't. I'm not a fan of you know big crushed distorted records. You know, I, I like my, to hear my stuff. Mix. I like my stuff loud as <laughs> shit. I can, I, yeah. I, every time I turn the music up on the radio, it sounds better. That yeah, scares yeah. me. I'm telling you, Derek. I gotta look into it, man. And, I, and I, Mike, Mike just told me about a plug-in that he got oh. that Travis Scott record as loud as everything I've ever heard. I'm not gonna mention it. It's the loudest album I've ever. We're gonna, we're gonna <laughs> talk. We're definitely gonna talk. I remember yeah. back in the day, like Chronic 2001 was the reference yeah, yeah. for how loud to be. Yeah. And it hit minus eight on the VU scale, and I thought that that was my reference for like ten years. <laughs> then I started doing 7.5, then seven. I thought that Talking was about RMS, it. right? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Travis's album goes to like 4.5. Wow. Damn. Like, and it didn't distort. I mean, yeah. a couple of places it did, but it's cool. A couple of places it did. It's not a great good though. distortion, yeah. like Dre distortion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know that? Sounds great. Um, Mike, what do you like about this upstart here? What do you like about his work? <laughs> oh, just makes this sound incredible. You know, the, everything, really. <laughs> Appreciate it. I've never met anybody that gets their personality, their heart. Like, Mike has done it for 20 years, yeah. but you're the new guy, man, and, and nobody does that better than you. Yeah. I love your engineering skills. Thank you. And you know, you know how we talk. I'm still learning. But, uh, but it's your heart that I pay for your records for. Yeah. Man, it's, uh, I think you need heart more than anything. And by the way, I buy your records, because <laughs> I want to yeah. support both of you guys. Huh? You. Appreciate it. Appreciate so it. Let me, let me, is it ever in the front of your head 
that you guys are helping to shape music that really changes the meter? Like, you know, like when you get the nominations or you hear the reviews or the controversy, like, right. it, every, look, we're lucky enough to be professionals and work and stuff and earn a living. But then there's certain people that get a chance to sort of change the meter. Do, do you ever, does it ever yeah. hit you that you're doing that? Me personally, um, we, I'm, I just want to make good music. If it, if, it, if, it, if it does what it does, then, you know, I'm just grateful and I'm blessed to, you know what I'm saying, be a part of it. Yeah. But if not, I'm just happy with making great sounding records at the end of the day. You know, yeah. I don't do it for the accolades. I do it for the great music to give to the people. That's probably so, what makes it great. Yeah, exactly. What do you think, Mike? Yeah, same with me. I just try to make great sounding records. And, yeah. You know, like, That's most important. I definitely try to raise the bar like, and like, try to get into new territory on every album we do. Yeah. You know, like, Mike, pick Mike, um, Mike's being shy, uh, which is not like Mike, but uh, I'm, I started my career in Atlanta. I'm from Florida. And Mike uh, is one of the early architects, and a lot of people, including myself, give him credit for the Dirty South sound. Yes. Now, in Atlanta, every time somebody gets a new drum machine, they come up with a new name for it, but it's still Dirty South sound, right, Mike? Yeah, Houston and shit. Yeah. So he, so <laughs> not, in, not Atlanta. <laughs> the, the early Scarface records and all the guys out of Houston where Mike's from, God, what great records, right? Those Scarface yeah. records. So, uh, so here's a question. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. I was going to say Derek's doing that legacy right uh, now, you know? Yeah, exactly. The, the one you. thing, one of the, one of the takeaways I've had from our personal experience with you and watching you professionally is that break rules, keep your own internal bar high. Yeah. It's not about the gear. Is some of it about education, learning your stuff, knowing what oh, you yeah. know? Is, yeah. is that important? Oh, definitely. You have to, like when I was coming up, you had to learn off of like, Pop into Dave Pensado's room and watch him mix for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, like, pop into Bob Brown's room. 30 minutes? You know. <laughs> a couple of hours. Uh, well, yeah. Well, that's what you told people. <laughs> I he, showed, he showed me the first McDSP plug-in, like, uh, ages and ago. I was like, fuck. Was like, yeah. And, and education really never stops, does it? No. Uh, like, nowadays, all kids can just, you can go on YouTube. And learn, yeah. Anything you want to learn, you just, how do I, blah, 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 blah. Right. And there'll be like 15 kids showing you different right. ways of doing it. Yep. You know? yep. Like I had to say, I'm using the SB 1200 right now, and I had to learn how to sample on it again. It took 10 minutes because somebody told me how to do it on YouTube. Right. You know? And ultimately, just for advice, we would recommend that you don't go to YouTube. You go to Pensado's <laughs> place. It's an online television show. It's kind of cool. <laughs> go there. You can find out the information. Just a, just hey, a, guys. Um, you guys both work with massive celebrities. I question the personality of yours. I love the personality of yours, but they're two different people. How do you work with Kendrick in terms of utilizing that personality and being a part of that, enhancing right. his records? And Mike, same question to you, because um, Kanye is a different person. You know, I can't imagine how hard it is both of you have. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. it's it's. I, I wouldn't even say it's hard. Um, like, me and Kendrick are brothers. You know, we came up 10 years strong. You know, we're all from the same neighborhood. Um, but, you know, I'm just, I don't know. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to, it's like, it's like, how do you guys work? It's kind of asking you, how would you guys work together? It's kind of, it's, it's, it's chemistry, you know? Yeah. I always say an engineer-artist relationship has to be an unbroken bond because, you know, you have to be able to complete the other guy's sentence. You have to know what this person wants as an artist. You have to be able to, you know, I always say engineer drives the car and, the, you know, the artist knows where he's going. Oh, so, you know, you have to really just, just have that relationship with the artist you're working with. Mike. When, yeah. when there's a disagreement. Oh. I'm sorry, because I do want to hear Mike. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, well, so when there's a disagreement. Right. And yeah. you feel strongly one way and the artist feels strongly that way, does the bond get you through that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, my whole thing is doing it both ways. If we both disagree or agree on, on separate things, uh, we will do two different ways and pick the best one. Gotcha. You know, but okay. if not, you know, me being the engineer, he being the artist, you know, he... he I'm, I'm blessed to have him, you know, just trust me in my yeah. ear to let me do my thing. And, you know, at the end of the day, he would trust what I think is, is the right sound for whatever we're doing at that time. Makes sense. Yeah. Kanye will send a record to 12 people to mix. <laughs> and, you know, it's whoever has the best mix wins, yeah. basically. Uh -huh. and if, but but, but uh, we, um, we're like brothers, you know. We've yeah. been working together since, not, like, 2001, I think. And, like, if I don't like something he's doing, I'll go in my room and change it. 
and bring it back to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then he'll keep changing it back the way he wants it. <laughs> you keep changing it. And I'll change it back. It back. <laughs> exactly. And eventually somebody will somebody will win. How, somebody do, will. how how does it feel to be in front of sixty thousand people, just you and Kanye on the stage? He plays guitar on stage, keyboards, DJs. Cool. Dances, Man. you look good in a skirt. <laughs> How does that feel? That power? Oh, Describe it great. to us. Nothing like hitting like a Moog Voyager on like you know ten million watts. You yeah. know, right? It's like it touches the soul. Several hundred, eighteen hundred, <laughs> eighteen inch wolfers. You know. <laughs> it's the best thing in the world. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's gotta be. Man, amazing. I'm so proud of both of you. Thank you. So, the business aspect of engineering, because I know you know. We've had conversations about curriculum and schools and touring and panels and stuff like that. And right. you, you have different business entities for engineering. Is that just part of your DNA? Is that part of sort of security and building, taking this opportunity and making it more, right. giving, giving opportunity to people? What's the motivation? Um, that's, that's what it's really about. You know, I feel, um, I strongly believe, you know, once you, once you get placed in a certain position or a situation, it's on you on how you're going to take that and build from there, you know. A lot of people's given opportunity and don't do nothing with it. You know, I'm not one of those guys who let opportunity pass. I'm going to take and strike when it's time. But also, I do it to, um, you know, me being a young engineer, where I come from, no one wanted to hear my mixes. I couldn't pay nobody to let me mix their records. So, you know, I'm doing it for those guys who have the passion, who have the heart to make these great sounding records and want to work, but don't get the shine. Don't get the love from the artists. Don't get love from producers. And, you know, I just want to build like a platform and, you know, just a community of people where, you know, it's, it's all about the music and not the other bullshit. Or excuse yeah. me. The, no, you no, know. the other bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> bullshit. That's yeah. Sure. Yeah. Hey, Derek, on, uh, on the song for free, uh, there were so many live instruments yeah. on that song. Great job, buddy. I remember, I remember we talked last year. <laughs> last year at NAMM, <laughs> I, 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 I ran this guy down. I said, yo, we have a jazz record. Can you please help me make this record? <laughs> I don't know shit about I don't know jazz. what the fuck I'm doing. Can you help me <laughs> what, please? What instrument, what instrument did, you, did, you, did you work on and go start out going, man, I don't know how to do this, yeah. and, then, and then it turned out great? Tell me yeah. an experience from the that The whole song. Thing. As soon as we sp spread, when we was recording, as a matter of fact, but when we spread the mix out, you know, I'm looking at all these instruments, you know, up, upright bass and, right. you know, all these, right. you know. You're like, what the hell is yeah, this Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm not, I, you know, I didn't come from a musical background. You know, I'm all about trial and error. You know, I jumped right into the shit. I, I got an interest in it and I learned by myself. You know, I spent hours, you know, learning Pro Tools and learning how to make stuff sound good. So me stepping back into a studio with all these amazing musicians and trying to find a way to make the, what they're doing sound great, it was, you know, it was, it was, it was a mission. But I would say that... Uh, <laughs> it was hell, man. It took me a, it took me a week to <laughs> fix that song, shit. <laughs> but um, you know, it just took time, man. You got to in anything you do in life, you got to take your time, you know, one step at a time, and just you know, just build it and believe in what you're doing is gonna be great at the end of the day. Mm. So, so Mike, when you're when you're able to, you know, transpose and sort of calculate in your head and stuff like that, is that just something that? Is a natural thing for you? Did you have yeah. to work on it and make it happen? You were born with that kind of stuff that I see in my head. It's like a weird. Yeah. Thing. Do, you, do you hear music and see it in colors, or you see it in numbers? no colors, just like charts and graphs? Okay, Cause, <laughs> it's, cause like, it's like a like the RTA things, but I saw that in my head before they invented the thing. You know, yeah, like, like he, tunnel vision. He can't but it's like colors because yeah. he's always looking through a fog. Don't well, yeah. I, when he was on the show, I was starting to see things in colors. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, am I, uh, do I, am I wrong? But I remember a, a really heartwarming story about you going back to your piano teacher. Is that am I thinking? Am I thinking right? I guess, yeah. Yeah, you bought her like two homes and a Rolls Royce. Or no. something. was that it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Tell that story. Or did it's I just true. tell it? <laughs> no, I think it's, no, it's not much of a story. I just went back to see her after I had a bunch of. Big records, and it was pretty cool. Yeah. Did she yeah, talk yeah. to you? I'm sure she didn't even talk oh, yeah. to you. Oh, yeah. I'm, sure you made her, I'm sure you made her life hell. Did she uh, talk to you? Yeah, oh, yeah. She was my teacher for like 13 years, you know. Wow. What, yeah. what do you like musically? What do you listen to when you're not working? Oh, man. Does it change over time? Is it it's broad? Is it? All kinds of shit. Like, yeah. Like lately, I've been listening to like Steely Dan and old. I've been there too. Classic recently. rock yeah. shit. Yeah, there's a lot I, of shit to. I got my Sonos yeah. working now, so I've been sure. just <laughs> randomly playing music. Yeah. yeah, I don't really listen to music much, but lately I have been. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? What do you listen to? Um, I've been trying to go back on older albums. Like, of course, you know, R.P. David Bowie. I've been listening to the, the Young American. Was it Young American? Yeah, yeah I've listened to that album. 
It's amazing. Just trying to get more familiar with different sounds and you know stuff like that. I hear a lot of DJ Quick in your work. <laughs> <laughs> I came up off that. What? Okay, oh, yeah. I knew okay. I did. No, DJ not. Quick, corrupt, all the old school West too. Coast. Yeah. Oh, he's like the, like the best engineer. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's all my the favorite funk, too. all the funk that was in those records. Yeah, yeah I saw him. A couple uh, of months another ago. important point for you guys who are developing yourself: feed your head different yeah. stuff. Don't get stuck in one thing. Never. Because that hybrid is going to morph into the thing that becomes your signature. So when you see a genre, and this happens a lot of times with millennials and younger folks, and you look down on that genre, like I'll see people do that about pop music or other kinds of stuff, what you're missing is an opportunity to break through. Exactly. It doesn't mean you have to, you don't, you don't have to go live with Justin Bieber's record, but you need to understand if you talk to Josh Goodwin that he took that from sort of a samba background out of his, his teaching in Miami, and underneath that is a sort of funky Caribbean right. kind of Brazilian thing. And you need to be able to analyze stuff like that and then take from it and do your own thing. For so sure. anybody you talk to, Cam, one of our interns is out there, badass drummer. Oh, raise what's up? That it, raise your hand, Cam. <laughs> that boy right there is a sick drummer hey. and just happens to also graduate from Columbia University. But that's another story. But anyways, put different things. Make yourself yeah. a gumbo in terms of what to. you're listening to, yeah. and then something will come out kind of spicy. Nah, for sure. I feel like... Um as an engineer or producer, you should just always just listen to everybody's music because you can get different, you know, ideas, vibes, and you know, find a way to make it all work for you. Yeah, absolutely. Mike, um, it, it's kind of weird. We've, we've known each other for so long, and I've never really watched you create a record. Do you tend to start with the drums first? Because I know Kendrick likes to start with the drums and then 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 fill in the instruments okay. after. He does. How do you like to start in a normal? It's kind of different every time, you know. Like, say you're doing Bieber. something for Bieber. Which you've done a couple. Usually start with the keyboard part. You know what I mean? Some chords, you know. Or it just depends. Like I'll go through samples, go through sounds until I find something that inspires me to play something. Do you suggest a melody to him or does he already come with one or every which way? Yeah, just back and forth. And is it different for a rap song as opposed to a pop song, a it's vocal or a rap? It's different every, for every song for me. Like I don't have... I don't use templates at all. Like I don't like to to start anywhere. I like to start with a blank screen and just okay, make a fader. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. templates bother me. Like they lock you into a creative flow. Right. You know. You have to. Like I don't have folders of sounds that I go to all the time. I just kind of okay. I don't have favorites. I just I, you know I got like five hundred thousand drum sounds and I'll just. <laughs> You know, just start looking through them. You know? Yeah, one by one. Yeah. And do. And do. Yeah. And yeah. Derek, you, you, who, do you come up with some of the drums? Because Kendrick likes to start with just basically a drums and a yeah. bass, and then he puts a rap on it. Yeah. How does he get inspired by just drums? I mean, I mean that's just well, that that's dumb, no, I take that question back. That was a dumb <laughs> question. I mean, I, who I'm doesn't get inspired it. by drums? I mean, it really, I mean, that's... That's just our whole background, just West Coast music. You know, every, all the West Coast music was driven by, you know, drums and, and, and the beat. So, you know, that's just, that's, just, that's just embedded in us from, you know, what we came up off of. Right, right. That's pretty. Yeah. Mike, what, what did, did I cut no, you? What did you take, what have you learned since you've been with Kanye that you are surprised about in terms of creativity? Hmm, just so much shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's actually that's all, that's all, yeah, that's the he's, only way he's like, he's, so like, <laughs> he's like a wealth of knowledge yeah, about man. music and about samples and he'll like we'll be working on a song and like say six months later somebody will email him a beat he'll be like put this with that and put it in the key of that and match this yeah. tempo and you'll be like fuck you know it's like like, damn. It's like a human root. He has this big puzzle right. in his head all the time. <laughs> he yeah. remembers everything he hears. And, like, boom. You know, I'm more spontaneous. I don't think, you know. Yeah. But and same question for you, Derek. Um, I guess yeah. it's harder for you because you never weren't with. Yeah, <laughs> with yeah. Okay, next question. <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> so, so present company excluded. You can't include Dave. Who are you guys' favorite mixers? Like, who's, who's mixes? Who, what mixes do you uh, go? Oh, I other know. Other than this yourself, be this is hard. I'm, I'm sitting next to the t one of the two, two of the greatest. Man. Well, yeah, like th then shit. The answer has no validity. The question <laughs> has no validity. <laughs> what? You'll knock it off. But the, nah. but you must watch the landscape. And there's yeah. Bob there's Powers. Ah, uh, yeah. Bob Power. Yeah. 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 yeah Tribe Called Quest. He had he had Studio C 
I stole Studio C. You're still bitter about that. <laughs> from took, Bob Power. He took a Back vacation. I moved in for eight years. <laughs> for a year? Fucking eight years. Eight years. <laughs> I, remember, I remember that. That was, that was a tense some, some period. Soon, okay. Someday in, soon, in a big public. engineer is going to steal your room. <laughs> One day. Yeah, in public. I apologize. For the, please forgive me. Two-day weekend that. turns into this I was working more than you back then. No, it's better because... And, and I gave you gigs. You know what that made me do? That made me go get some SSL preamps and compressors and take my Pro Tools stuff to my apartment yeah. and say, fuck the big studio. <laughs> yeah. And I, have, I haven't mixed on the SSL since then. Since huh. Everything <laughs> happens for a reason. I mean, you know, not... Yes, Derek, not that is correct. <laughs> say that again. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> the, the Grammys, an important thing, not an important thing, happy for it, but keep it moving, whatever, recognition of your work. Um, I think it's great to be recognized. You know, at the end of the day, it always feels good for people to recognize the hard work you put into anything you do. Yeah. So, of course, it feels good, but we don't, you know, we're not, oh, we're, we're going to get, we're going to go work for these Grammys now. Like, it's, yeah, right. it's not what you, you know, it, it should, nah, it's like, we just, we're just happy to be in a position that we're in where we can, you know, make this, this kind of music and have this type of music be acknowledged by the world in such a great space. Mm -hmm. When you travel, because both of you guys travel, yeah. which are a bunch. Do you pick up things internationally from other places in this country, this influence, Definitely, creative yeah. Yeah. music people? Is it, does it part of the stimulation process that you then can bring home and distill your own way? Because, you know, people don't get that opportunity yeah, just, unless you just get Going that to different countries, you know, you, you hear different music from different around, you know, different music from around the world, you get inspired, you know. Yeah. You might hear drums in different patterns that you wouldn't hear in the States or in hip-hop or R&B or any type of genre in the States. But you'll hear a crazy pattern from, you know, from... Portugal or Spain or something that you want to bring that back home and want to work with it. You know, a lot of our, a lot of Tempel Butterfly was influenced while we were in South Africa. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. So, you know, yeah. So it's, it, it, traveling, it just opens your mind to just different, different sounds. You know, now that you say that, I remember when you played it for me, it was just about to come out, I think. And I, I was blown away that they even went in that direction. Yeah. But that they sort of found a way to make it relevant and young. And I was going, like, Damn, you know what I mean? And now that you say where the influence was, I now can hear back in my head that was it was sort of a sound from other places yeah. that you Americanized a little, yeah, yeah, yeah. but not a lot. Exactly. Right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, okay, got it. So now you I mix it on a console? Yeah, I mix it. Split everything out? I do a hybrid. It's like I was talking about this the other day. Um, just all the years Sorry. me learning how to mix. No, um, no, that's good. All the years me teaching myself how to mix, I've always been in the box. But uh, when Kendrick signed to Dre, you know, you know he... Analog, he makes it on SSL 4000 all day long. So I just took what I know in the box, and I mixed it with what Dre taught me on the, you know, on the SSL, and kind of just created a hybrid of the two, and kind of created my sound from that. Was mm -hmm. dope. Watching him play that. <laughs> John and I yeah, were for like, a while, I went down to like eight channels where I had like vocals, drums, yeah. keyboards, and I, 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 I want to get into doing that actually. But then time I'm just in the box time. now. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, so what's uh, your, I'm sorry. Well, go ahead. <laughs> you switch songs like every. 12 minutes. Yeah, you know? for sure. You just like, wipe you don't your have time. And then recalls is a bitch. Did you just wipe yeah. your hands on me? No, I'm just teasing. I'm just, <laughs> sorry, we're having two parallel conversations. <laughs> <laughs> Her and I are just entertaining. Hey. Mike, what's your favorite keyboard in terms of, of working with Kanye? Give me two. What's your favorite live keyboard with him to take along? Because I notice you only usually take one or two. It's just a, yeah, usually a Moog Voyager has been my go-to live stuff. Moog Voyager... A Juno and a Triton. That's like my. Those your that was the studio setup for a long time. Now I've got a lot of. I got a lot. I just bought a System 35, the big Moog. I bought that. I've got like. Just tons, tons of analog stuff I've been yeah. using. And Derek, what's your favorite plugin that emulates something in the analog world that you use sometimes? Um. The Fairchilds was 670. The UAV, yeah. Yeah, that plugin I use that I use that for parallel and vocals all the time actually. Which one though? The the, not the, leg not the legacy is it the legacy? You the UA? UA? Or, okay. I, I think it's UA. Yeah. yeah. The 670 UA legacy. Yeah. 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 And you parallel it. I use it for it? parallel compression on vocals on everything I do. If I don't have the actual piece of gear, I'll use the plugin. Hmm. Oh, cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Do you approve of that, Mike? Yeah. Okay, just check. I don't parallel, but <laughs> <laughs> I parallel. I've never, par I've never yeah, paralleled parallel anything in my life. How come you don't parallel? <laughs> it's the, like the greatest thing ever. It's just not my thing. Yeah, not the way I do things. Drop by my studio, Mike. Have you um, lessened or 
So the DJ aspect of what you do when you guys used to be on the road, right. are you doing as much of that, less of that? Do you like to still go do it? Um, I love it. Um, what I get from DJ and with Kendrick, it's, um, it's kind of like a, a, a surreal moment because I get to witness these records being made from ground up, from, you know, drums, snares, everything being built up to see it performed in front of hundreds of thousands of people. So, you know, it's like a best of both worlds for me. That's, that's yeah, the best shit ever. the best shit ever. Yeah, you get to yeah. go out and see people's reactions to what you created, essentially. That's so. how you you learn how to make the next, re yeah. next record. I was, yeah. was going to ask exactly. like, like, like when I'm playing with Kanye live, I'll start adding parts and be like, oh, that's... Just to kind of test it out, that's right? That's some cool shit, yeah. you know, like... And then instead of re-recording the song, we'll just add that to the yeah, yeah, shit. Because you, know? you can see what's working and not working. Yeah. Try yeah. something the next You night. can literally see the response as you're See what playing. bounces yeah. off the wall, yeah. what it sounds like. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. For sure. The whole thing. Uh, that's, yeah. that's, a, that's just a... That was a great moment for me right there. I love that stuff. Well, take, take a moment and enjoy it. Okay, good. Now, oh, back to the thing. We're back. Uh, <laughs> moving forward. So... <laughs> mixing outside, you know, because sometimes you get identified with something. You know, Kendrick Lamar or Kanye and so on and so forth. But your taste and stuff and appetites are much broader than that, right? right. So do you, do you take on different things to keep inspired and stimulated and test other stuff? We do that kind of with Dave. What, what do you, or do you stick in one lane and, and stay um, where I it think, works um, for you? I think over time, just being in this world long enough, you know, you just spark interest in different things because you're, you know, what is that? What word am I looking for? You, you, your interest sparks in different things because you're, you, 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 you see, you know, your, your eyes and your mind is open to everything at this point, you know. So, of course, you know, you want to expand and try different sounds, you know. Yeah. I've been, you know, saying trying to get into different genres and stuff like that, trying out different things. So, right. that's the ultimate goal is to, you know, just do everything, you know, at the end of the day. Same yeah. as you, Mike? Yeah, just learn something new every, every day, day about yeah. something, you know. Right. Like, for sure. Like, I've been way into modular since for the last six months. Yeah. Right. Like, right. Way into it. <laughs> I've really learned about synthesis. Like, I thought I knew about it before, you know. Yeah. But, uh, it's one thing doing music. You can never know everything, you know. So it's always, yeah. you know, you never know everything. And so once, once you get close, it changes. I, I, I mean, quick. You quickly. Quick. Well, don't you think, because we say this all the time on the show, I think the best guys, and, you know, we get, to, we get a chance to sit with the best guys every week. The best guys are always curious. Gotcha. Like, you yeah. never really get there. You're just always searching, right? But part of the journey of searching is the sexy part. Yeah. Then you yeah. find something that works for you and go, yeah. oh, damn. Okay, now I'm going to find the next thing. Is that fair? Or? Uh, kind of. I mean, I can only talk about myself. Sure. But I, I mean, I, how I feel I just move forward is, you know, you got to just always stay interested in learning new things. Like Mike right. said, every day you got to learn something new. So there'll be days I'll be in the studio and I'll just go through my plug-in list and just open things that I've never used before and see what it does, you know, just right. why not, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. And Mike, you're you know you're wearing one of my favorite groups hats, Mothers with Attitude. How's yeah. the group doing? They're doing fine. Yeah, I've been putting a lot of stuff on SoundCloud lately. A lot of instrumentals and cool stuff, I think. Cool. So guys, there are some handheld mics. Does anybody may have questions? Because you don't get this opportunity much. So okay, so I just want to know where you're at. Um, want to get to some questions now? Let's let's hit the guy there. Speak into the mic. Really yeah. amplify. All right, so my question is um, Damn, for, uh, <laughs> for uh, Mr. Ali. What does uh, Kendrick's vocal chain look like, if you don't <laughs> mind? Uh, mentioning a little bit. A whole lot of plug-ins. Nah, uh, <laughs> we, we try to keep it light, honestly. It might sound like a lot. Um, but, you know, working with Kendrick, he does a lot with his vocal tones and just playing with his vocals. Using his voice as an instrument. You know, my key to tracking is, you know, make something sound as natural as possible. So, you know, from there, we just take, we take what the, you know, natural recording and just play with it, you know, try to do different backgrounds, do different tones, transpose, pitch certain things, you just play around with it, you know, do something that's going to catch your ear, it's going to, it's going to sound out of the, or, you know, out of the ordinary, you know. Anybody else got a question? Don't be shy. Got a question for Ali. I know you've talked about how you mix about 80% of your mix in mono, like right. on an, on an auto tone. Right. At what point do you start focusing on the stereo sound? And, and what do you, like, as far as effects go? Um, it's kind of it's hard to answer that because everybody has their own technique. But me, when I'm mixing mono, even with the, like, reverbs and delay throws like that, you can still hear everything, but you hear it in mono. So uh, the reason why I mix in mono is to gauge the level of everything, not the actual mix. I'm gauging the level on everything sits in the mix, including effects. 
So, you know, when I'm mixing a vocal and if it's sitting right in the mix or whatever and I'm adding reverb, I would have, I would do it in a sense where I can still hear it, but it's not overpowering any other part of the mix. So I'm mixing the mono and I'm, and I'm trying to throw a reverb or a cool delay on it. I still want to hear that delay and reverb, but it, it shouldn't overpower the mix while you're in mono. Once you put it back in the stereo, that's when everything opens up. You do that too, Mike? I mix on Tad's. I, mix, I usually mix on the big speakers. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Mike carries the two biggest subs you've ever seen. Oh, I <laughs> they come in on an elephant train, like, like, like when he goes into record plant. Have you seen them? What? Good uh, Lord, they're big. Uh, no, it's death. It's <laughs> no. And he I'm the deaf. He sets sure. a little R tone on top, so you use a little R tone with a big sub. Uh, uh, who else has a question? question. Uh, yeah. In the back over here. I got a question for both of you. Do you guys put anything on the stereo bus while you're mixing? Mix into the stereo bus or before mastering? Have anything on the stereo bus? Me personally, uh, cause because I do print all my stems back into Pro Tools. Um, I, I don't. I just get wait. I, my, like he said, all my mixes are pretty much where I like them. I just send everything to master just for the level. So on my master bus, I don't. I, not really. No. I mix without anything on my tube bus for probably. 75% of my mix, yeah. and then I'll just pull in my chain that I use. The, the Same way I do, yeah. Secret chain. Secret done. chain. Yeah. <laughs> and then I just run it through that chain and... Give it up! It just hit it hard enough to make it move the meters right, and then it usually comes out the back end hitting where I want it to. Very cool. It, it usually comes out so loud nothing can play it. <laughs> Remember that's, back that's in the day we had to watch our levels because of the disc men, and they would clip. There's a guy over there. Agree, there. Oh, sorry. Oh, um, going back to the first question, um, when you guys have like vocal ideas for stuff like that, how much of it is, do you re-record like to get the more essence of the idea, and how much of it do you just try and make the original vocal work? Good question. Me, I, I would try to make the original vocal work because um, the way Kendrick and our, all of our artists how we how they like to work is um, they go off emotion. So when, when they're recording a record, they might not get that same emotion when they re-record it. So I'll try to, I'll try to do what I can to that. But if it doesn't work out how I feel it should work out, I'll just tell Kendra, like, yo, you might hate me, but let's try it again. Let's try it this way. And of course, he'll try it. You know, at the end of the day, we'll pick the best one. Like, Mike? Yeah, the same. Yeah. Try to keep the original vocal yeah. when it, whenever possible, as long as there's words, you know. Yeah, yeah. Anybody else? Oh, I see way in the back there, if we can get What's over going to on? it. Party over there. <laughs> yeah. Like um, I know, especially like with hip hop, you know, you gotta have those those punchy 808s. But how do you keep them punchy but tame? You know, without getting too wild. Why would you want them tame? Yeah, you want yeah. them both. You know, keep it you know nice and punchy, but you know not too much because you know 808s and low frequencies can definitely overpower yeah. small systems. Mike invented the 808. A lot of people <laughs> don't know that. Did you know that, Derek? <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I mean. I think distortion is one of the secrets of 808s. Yeah. You know, like, like, so what Travis Scott, he's like, you make, where can you hit the 808s on my iPhone? Yeah. But it's, you know, just a little touch of distortion makes them cut on the small speakers, you know, and sure. knock on the big speakers. And if your speakers can't handle it, you know, get some bigger speakers. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Pretty simple. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Does anybody in the way back row that's segregated because the fire marshals are clearing the thing? Anybody back up against the wall? The fire marshals. Have a question? <laughs> no? Call the fire marshals. Uh, okay. So let's see. Who else? I think you already got one in, didn't you? Let's get some. Oh, here. sorry. Go ahead, man. Hey, uh, I have a question for um, Ali and for Mike. When it comes to working with Kanye and Kendrick and – uh, with the budget that you guys have to work with, you can pick any preamp, any kind of microphone. When it comes to doing new songs, are you ad are you additioning a lot of these different preamps or microphones? Or since you've been working with them for so long, you kind of have one or uh, a preamp and a mic in mind that works for their sound? Um, it, de it depends if he's rapping or if he's doing his harmonies or singing. It, it all depends, you know, on what we're working on. Yeah. You know, when he's rapping, you know, we use C800. When he's doing, like, more melodic stuff, we use the uh, U47. Um, pretty much those two mics, yeah. Mike? Yeah, about the same, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's the two mics to have, yeah. Go ahead. I have a question for everyone on the panel, actually. Whoa. Uh, there's basically an infinite number of variables you can tweak during a mix. You could, you could go on forever mixing the same song. How do you decide when it's finished? 
Shit. When that's, you run out of time. That's like a, that's one of the biggest <laughs> gifts, I think, is <coughs> just to say a song is done, yeah. you know. I got a mix up I've been working on for three days. <laughs> You're at, you run out of time. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, it, nobody it, ever finishes a mix. Uh, at least if 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 Michelangelo didn't have the Pope to tell him to get the damn Sistine Chapel finished, he'd still be working on it. That's the way creativity yeah. works. So, so if you take that metaphor a step, if this is Michelangelo, Pope. <laughs> Man, that's so true. I love this guy. Cause, Pope. Cause I'm I, like, uh, the invoice is due. Dave, we need to finish by tomorrow at 11. And then we, <laughs> but sometimes that literally can I be. I need that. Uh, I need that. Because it can go on forever. 100%. All right, so the next four questioners are going to win Pro Tools. So if you, anybody need Pro Tools 12 out here? Okay, so now don't come with some <laughs> bullshit questions. Like, don't say, Ali, you know, what's the color of your jacket or some shit like that. All right, and and we'll let you guys select who it is. So in this sector, Wait, what's going on? somebody who has a question can win Pro Tools. You make the call. Pick one. This gentleman right here. All right. Uh, I have a question for Mr. Ali. Will you ever, you said that you mix uh, in the box? Uh, I do a hybrid of both, analog both. and digital. Will you yeah. ever mix just inside the box? Yeah, for sure. It, it depends if I don't have no time. You know, I'm not scared of just mixing in the box. I just go, I, I like the feeling of being hands-on. I like to touch what I'm working on, you know what I'm saying? So when I'm actually mixing analog on a, on a board or outboard gear, I really feel like I'm a mouse and I'm inside Pro Tools. But um, yeah, I mix in the box all the time. Yeah. So as the winner, whoever gets to be a winner, see Chongor, make sure you get your email so we can get Pro Tools 12 to you. Somebody in this sector, we'll get to the back in a second. Oh, this is the intellectual, calm, think tank sector. <laughs> no questions. There's just analysis going on here. All right, so we'll go on the back. No, 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 you can't cheat. You got a question. Uh, my man right back there, who I moved aside to come up here. See him? Can we get it to him? All righty. Hey, Mike, you're, you're killing us with that chain, bro. Hey, thank you guys very much for the information. We really appreciate it. We all want to know about the chain. I'm seeing Dave's eyes light up. Well, I know. Give us a hint. <laughs> <laughs> Can you give us a hint on that chain? Please. Give How are you pushing? I'll give you a hint. Talk about Mike's uh, stereo bus chain. Oh, the chain. That's well, like, the I'll give you a hint. About? Don't over. Want the jewel? Like, I'm not wearing chain. Really. Mike, <laughs> Mike, <laughs> well, I was Mike, looking for it. I was like, damn, we got a chain. If I get it right, don't overuse the limiter. The limiter doesn't is not musical, never will be. So you want to make the limiter happy. Not don't make it use too much. Control things before the limiter gets it. Maybe through a compressor. And then once you want to get it louder, you're gonna have to learn some other techniques. Maybe Sometimes, try two limiters. Yeah. Sometimes, that's all I'm gonna say. sometimes traditional uh, emulations of, of gear don't work. Sometimes you got to go to the digital world to help do some digital things, and that's it. Simple. So make sure you get your email. Did I get it, Mike? Uh, oh, I, I think we right? have somebody in the segregated rope line <laughs> back David there. Sada. Yeah, you. <laughs> so come up so we can ask you a question. You're representing the crew that those? the fire marshals yeah, has great. segregated. We're going to go to legislation and talk to Rahm Emanuel about that. That's bullshit. And, oh, I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Yeah, we could keep them uh, occupied by setting a fire on the other side of the building. That's true. They run over there. And we could. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> hands up over when, there. when you're getting towards the end of a mix, what system do you feel like gives you the most truth when you're listening into what that mix is going to sound like when it's getting broadcast hey, and stuff? Um, Man, if that if yeah, there's yeah. ever one, yeah. we'll buy it. But it, yeah, totally. I listen to everything. Uh, everything. Aura tones, NS tens, um, laptop speakers, car speakers. Yeah, one of my favorite new references is my little 12 inch MacBook. Yeah, yeah. It's like so loud. It's yeah. like you can. The fig It's one? like the little bitty one. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like the new my new Aura tone kind of trying to figure out how to stream music into that from my board or whatever, <laughs> so I can just listen live through the laptop. Smaller is better when you're trying to do that yeah. a lot of times. So way in the back over there, the guy that's jumping up and down because he either has a question or he has to pee or he likes the Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> um, you. <laughs> so he's a Russell <laughs> Wilson fan. Right, so uh, Mary J. Blige, Now or Never, Vocal Harmonies, Mixing, Tracking. Talk about that. Um, I didn't track that record. Um, mixing was hard. It was a lot of harmonies. But... Um, I mean, that was a minute ago. Um, that was really just like board EQ, board compressor. Like she tracked her stuff really well. So when we got it, you know, she her engineer already put like a pre mix and stuff on it. So I just what I did was just shape it and get it sitting right inside the, the you know the two track or the 
track that beat. So it wasn't too much that I did on that, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, two more, two more questions, and then we'll uh, wrap it up. So let's go one there. The, 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 she's got a mount. Okay. Derek, <clears throat> Derek, I have a question for you. Okay. Growing up, what kind of music did your parents listen to? Great question. And how did that influence you um, in your music? Uh, my, I was raised my grandmother. You know, she was a... Uh, you know, she's from a Polish descent. So when she took me to school every morning, she used to blast ABBA. Wow. Really? She would blast ABBA. I love it. All day. Like sound it mixes. I'm in the back seat. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> I'm in the back seat as a kid. I couldn't even sit in the front seat. She's just going crazy in the front seat to ABBA. Um, so I think that. Um, Dude, how did she look? I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> wow. No hands in the wheel. Going, wow. oh, that was her turn up. You know, the ABBA was that's her right. turn up. But um, <laughs> I think, I mean, look, that's funny you say that. Um, just li thinking back about that, I think that kind of just expanded my horizons to different sounds and different type of music. You know, me being where I came from, I would have never put in an ABBA CD, you know, but, you know, my granny looked out for me. <laughs> she got me right. And, and let me just tell you really quickly, because I want Mike to answer it. At the last Pensado Awards, and you're really going to want to come to the next one, but I won't go there. Who does he bring? Ali brought grand his grandmother, and they were rolling arm in arm. <laughs> Give him a round of applause. That was a That's proud moment for my boy. That's the queen right there. He, he was honored. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, what did you listen to? What, did, what, did you, what, what was your environment? What kind of music were you listening to as you were coming up as a kid? Mike, don't be bashful. It's the Carpenters, <laughs> but he might not say that. <laughs> Actually, yeah. <laughs> my, my sister had those records, yeah. Now I listen to, like, everything, like, classic rock, like, Queen, like, Heart, like, I don't know, everything, really. Yeah. Leonard Skinner. Weren't you in Leonard Skinner? I did a little work. I love Leonard Skinner. Yeah. Yeah, you, you played with the band, mm -hmm. right? A little, well, a couple I thought he, for, for the longest, I thought he played with the Osmonds. Like, ah! <laughs> I thought he was Leonard Skinner. But it Skinner. was somebody else. What was it? <laughs> I had a crush on Marie. She was cute. Oh, man. She was He's cute. playing you guitar for those Weight Watcher like, commercials. That's before my time. Still cute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As we digress. Guess, yeah. um, the uh, <laughs> opportunity... <laughs> First of all, we want to thank two incredibly gifted talents who happen to really grace our show and be brothers of ours, and hopefully you spent good time with them. Give a round of applause to Mike Dean and, and Mixed by Ali. Uh, one of the reasons that we like doing this is that it gives Dave and I a chance to thank you for your support. It also gives us a chance to shout out our team, so spread out through here with Cam and and Chongor and Leandro, that really beautiful black woman there with the glasses on hey, the is, is, hey. is Will Thompson's <laughs> right hand, who does our social media, who, by the way, as a sidebar, her father probably is one of the greatest R&B voices yeah. in the history of R&B, which is the lead singer of The Whisper, Scotty Scott. But she is a, oh, yeah, give Scotty Scott a round of applause. And then tell your dad that I hooked him up at Nam, <laughs> shit like that. Um, if you, get, if you get a chance, come up, take a picture, take a snap. This is an opportunity. We'll be here tomorrow with Mike Elizondo. We thank you so much. Round of applause for Avid, and we love you. Oh, yeah. Before we get on, I got to say one oh, thing. One, one, one thing, thing, hold one up. Thing. For all the aspiring engineers, you know, you come into something like this as a start in your right. career. Don't ever Don't feel discouraged, you know. I would always want every one of my peers to feel like they got the, a chance, the opportunity to be the best. So just keep going. And we have to thank these two here for pushing the limits on this whole community. So let's have a make some noise yeah. for Dave and Herb.